What's up everyone? Today we're going to look at how we can utilize the new updates that were announced in Config 2023 in order to make a responsive design. We're going to look at the new auto layout features and also obviously our new best friend, variables. Let's jump in. In the file, you'll have this frame, which is like a website design. You've got a navigation bar with a logo, some cards over here for the different products, and then a footer. Now, if we click on this right now, and I just try and make it smaller, you see that nothing really scales correctly, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go step by step on the different elements that make up this page and find out how we can make them responsive. Let's start with this flower gallery. So I've separated the elements from within the page outside, so we'll play with them outside and then dump them back into the page at the end. Let's look at this gallery uh, in the layers panel. You can see that it's separated into rows and this is you know the old style before we had wrap so let's fix that first of all i'm going to click on my flower gallery and then enter to select all the children and enter again to select just the cards themselves i'm going to grab them in the layers panel drag them above the rows remove the rows and now we have just one big kind of flower gallery auto layout that has all of the cards inside of it. Now, obviously, this isn't what we want. We don't want them all just in one column. And we also don't want them just in one row. We want them to wrap. So if I click on wrap straight away, boom, this is what happens. I have the width fixed at 875. And that's why when I made it a row or a column, that width kind of stayed in place. So when I wrap it, it creates, you know, two rows of four and then one row of two. Now, this is good. And this is responsive, so if I make it wider or I make it smaller, it works, right? But I don't love that when it's kind of this 875, which is the width that it's going to be in the page, you see here on the page it is 875. I don't love that these there's a kind of this empty space. So what I can do is I can make it a bit more responsive. So we know how to make it responsive, right? We know how to make the cards inside fill whatever space they have. That was a hint. So what we need to do is I'm selecting my flower gallery, clicking enter, and I've selected all of the cards. Now I need to set them instead of fixed to fill, right? And then they'll fill whatever space they have and it'll be great. Not so much. So how can I fix this, right? Because they're filling the space that they have, but they're not wrapping anymore, right? So the reason for that is they're saying, I have enough space. I can fill up whatever I can fill up. But that's not what we want, right? We want to stop them at some point. Maybe we want to give them a minimum width. So I'll select my gallery, click on enter to select all of the cards inside. And then over here in this drop down, I'm going to apply a minimum width. And the original width of the card was 200. So I'm just going to say 200. Look at that. It's so quick and easy, right? So we set our flower gallery to wrap. And then we told the cards inside that they should fill the container. So fill up and take whatever space they can. But when it comes to the minimum, they should never become smaller than 200. And that way we protected ourselves. So this one is still 200, 200. And then it knows that, you know, it, it can't have them all just in one row like it did before. And with doing that, you see these two cards at the bottom, instead of just being two 200 width cards and some empty space, have taken up more space. So if I make it a bit smaller, you see one card is taking up all that space now. Make it a bit longer so you see how it's become like super dynamic now that is only using wrap and min width let's make this the original size so 875 i'll copy this select my gallery in my page and paste to replace command shift and r now that I've pasted it in my frame, this frame is also an auto layout, by the way. If I make it smaller, you see that that's not really responding right now. The reason is that it's not set up to respond with what the rest of the page does. So if I click on this gallery and I make it smaller, then yeah, it will respond, but it's not responding to the rest. So the best fix around this is set the gallery to fill container and then just add some padding. So let's say I know I need 200 on each side and that way it will respond kind of when the outside responds because it needs to keep that 200 and 200 on the side then it will just scale. Now let's have a look at the footer. So right now, when I make this footer smaller, again, I just pulled it out of the page to make it simpler. When I make this smaller, nothing really happens, right? So let's see how we can fix this. We can see that it is an auto layout. Simple, we can just wrap it, right? It has two elements inside of it. It has the logo and the icons. So if we make it wrap, then the icons will go underneath the logo, right? And that's great for us. Maybe 150 is a bit much for the uh, horizontal spacing. So let's make it 50. Let's have a look now. Grabbing the footer, making it smaller. Okay, it worked, but still it's not great, right? So I'm going to Command Z. I think maybe we can make this wrap as well. So the icons will wrap between themselves and also the big footer will wrap as well. So I'm going to select the icons auto layout, wrap that one as well. Again, 60 might be too much, let's make it 30. 
click on my big footer, make it smaller. Okay, so the icons have already started wrapping. You see, I just reached this point and already my icons are wrapping. Great. And now, moment of truth. Boom. Yes. Okay, so it's bringing them underneath. And I would always recommend bring them to like probably a point where you know like let's say an iphone is 390 usually so and let's see does this look right to us maybe now we actually think that it shouldn't be 30 maybe it should be 15 yeah that looks a bit better maybe as well on the big one maybe 50 is too much maybe we want 25 so bring it to kind of the smallest width it can be and see how you feel about those uh, those different spacings because when it is 1440 which is the desktop size we were kind of happy with it but then we added that second spacing right for when it does wrap so great footer also done let's copy that into our main frame i'm going to command c bring that over here command shift r paste to replace and we want to make sure that it's on fill because remember the big frame is an auto layout as well if it wasn't an auto layout by the way so if i just remove the auto layout right now all you have to do with this one is make sure that the constraints are set to left and right and that does the same thing if i do that for the gallery as well left and right take the frame and just make it smaller see so it happens the same way because it's not on auto layout then now the footer won't move down to accommodate for the gallery but sometimes we need just a frame with constraints sometimes we need an auto layout so we fixed our footer bar using the wrapping we fixed our flower gallery using wrapping and min width let's look at the navigation now so the way the navigation bar is built is we have a logo and then we have some links the links are in auto layout and they are have a set spacing they're set to pack and then the logo is just an image with a fixed width and height so right now, when I make it smaller, nothing really happens. But what if we do a first kind of fix using nothing really new? What if instead of 70 in packed, what if we make this auto so it's space between? And then maybe we add some padding. So let's say 100 pixels on each side. Let's have a look at that. If I select my navigation, make it smaller. Mm, it's not working. It's not working because this auto layout is set to fixed. It needs to be set to fill, right? So it responds to what's happening to its parent. So I'm selecting the navigation, making it smaller. Okay, okay, so it's shrinking. And I think that's kind of what we want. So let's move this now into our frame. I'm gonna command C to copy it, bring it over here and command shift and R to paste to replace. I'll make it fill the container. Great. So if I select sunshine flowers now, just the big frame, make it smaller. Look at that, everything is responsive. So that was step one of making it responsive. Now we're gonna take it one step further with variables. So let's start off with just creating some basic size variables for the width of the page for mobile and for desktop. I'm gonna go into local variables over here, create a new collection. I'm gonna call it sunshine flowers. Then say my first variable is going to be a number variable and it's page width. And I'm going to have two modes from the start. One is desktop and one is mobile. For desktop, the page width is 1440 and for mobile, let's use 390 because that's usually the width of the kind of phones today. So let's set that up first of all. I'm going to select my frame and in the width kind of drop down, I can apply a variable. So it will be using page width. Automatically, it's changed here. And in the layers, I now have the mode selection. So I can select sunshine. Oh, I said sunshine flowers to desktop. And I will duplicate this. I'm just holding down option and shift and dragging. And then this one will be mobile. Okay. It's chaos, but we're going to fix it. First thing we need to fix is the gallery. Okay, something's happened here. What's happened? So it did move, it did shrink and wrap around just as we needed it to, but you see this padding is in the way. So the padding right now is 200. Let's put a variable there as well. So I'm going to create a new number variable and I'm going to call it um, gallery H padding so it's the horizontal padding for the gallery uh, and in desktop I know that I need 200 I think in mobile I only need 15 to be honest so I'll select this gallery and I will change it over here so instead of 200 just as a number in the horizontal padding I'm going to change it to gallery H padding and I'll do that for this one as well and because it already knows it's in the mobile mode you can see that it's already bringing up that 15 here so it knows it's different great we fixed that easy peasy really quick now the footer, 
worked perfectly, right? Because we've already set it with the auto layout. We don't have to use variables and everything. This one, the auto layout was enough for it. The auto layout was enough for this as well, but we needed to help it out a little bit by changing the padding on the left and right from 200 to 15, because it is different for mobile and for desktop. Now let's have a look at this. This is the tricky one, right? Because when we were just looking at a desktop and we were just shrinking it to a smaller desktop or to a tablet, having the links just kind of shrink into each other worked, but now it doesn't, okay? So we know that for mobile, usually the navigation bar will just be maybe a logo and a burger menu or even just a burger menu. So let's see how we can do that. In the file, I've created another navigation bar over here and it looks the same as the one we had before, but it's slightly different. Let's see. We've got the logo at the top. Then we've got the links over here in a different auto layout called bottom. We've got the links inside just like before and then a burger menu. So I'm going to copy this. So command C and just place that into here, make it fill the container and we'll look at mobile once we fix it. So yeah, we don't want the, the burger menu to show up on desktop, right? Cause it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to connect that burger menu to a Boolean variable. Let's see, go into local variables, create a new Boolean and call it burger menu. Now on desktop, it's going to be false because we're not going to see it when we're on desktop, but when we're in mobile, I do want to see it. So I'll turn it on. Let's check that out. So I'll select the burger menu frame. Then in the layers, in the design panel, remember we need to right click on the eye to find our Boolean variables. So burger menu, that will disappear. Now, if I copy this over to mobile, so command shift R, great. A burger appeared, but something needs to disappear as well, right? So let's do the same exact opposite for the links. Gonna add a new Boolean variable and call it nav links. And those are the opposite, right? On the desktop, they're on. On the mobile, they're off. Let's connect it. I'm going to select my links from the uh, navigation bar. Make sure you're not selecting the whole kind of bottom auto layer, but you're actually selecting the links one. Right click on the eye and connect that to nav links Boolean variable. Then I'm going to copy the navigation bar again, command C and command shift R to paste to replace. Great, right? It worked. It doesn't look perfect, but we're going to look at that now. So this is a bit of a fake out, but it works. So sunshine flowers, I know that in here, I'll probably just want it to be smaller, right? Probably just needed to be about this size in order for it to look nice. So let's do that. Let's just add that variable. I'm gonna go into here and say new number variable. Uh, let's call it logo width. So in desktop, the logo width is two, eight, nine. And then in mobile, let's see, I tested it out here, probably a hundred and, 60 and let's change this to 160 as well just so i can see that kind of ratio and what it comes up with so 160 works 160 works now let's make the logo height so for desktop it's 124 and for mobile it's let's make it 69. great now i need to sign these selecting my logo in the drop down applying the width so logo width and then applying the logo height copying my nav bar and placing it in here, command shift R. Wonderful, right? Now I'll just add a bit of padding at the top over here, maybe like 15 pixels padding. Great. So now this means that I can take, you know, this one, I'm just gonna copy it over to here. This is my frame. It is a website design. I have the layer set to the desktop mode. And if I wanna swap it, mobile boom everything will swap automatically because i have it set up that way and that is how we make a design super responsive using the new auto layout features and the amazing variables i hope you enjoyed and learned a lot again there is so much you can do with this we could have made the button change if it was in mobile it's different spacing different size different color even so we can do a lot with this please leave a comment below let me know how you're getting on with this what other types of things you want to see in variables maybe you have some tricks to share as well don't forget to like and subscribe See you at the next one.